Greetings and good afternoon, gentlemen. Today I'd like to talk about something that I have been thinking about for quite some time now, perhaps for a year, if not more. And many people would refer to what I'm talking about as some form of uh, propertarianism. That, that's actually not what I'm talking about. Um, but this idea of what I call sort of spontaneously leave me aloneism. It sounds silly on the face of it. It's not a very serious description of something. But one thing I observed on the internet, and also to a lesser degree in real life and occasionally interacting with people IRL, is that increasingly there is a faction of people and individuals who have very little interest in participating in quote-unquote party politics, which is to say uh, they themselves would not describe uh, their mentality or their views as right or left, but they simply want to be left alone to their own devices and get on with their lives. I've noticed this, of course, primarily on people who would likely be affiliated with the right, but I've also noticed this on occasion with people on the left. And therefore, I don't really think that this idea of wanting to be left alone or leave me aloneism, as I am calling it here, is particular to the right or left, although you would probably find more exponents of it and more people interested in it on, quote unquote, the right. And this links up to another concept I want to talk about uh, in this video more extensively, which is the uh, quality of identity. Now, when I talk about identity, I'm not talking about the discussions I've had on sort of lack thereof of identity, nebulous things related to lack of free will or a uh, consistent personality, but, but more conventional notions of identity. What a person thinks of himself as uh, politically, ethnically, religiously, etc. And here's the thing. Uh, we live in an age where quote-unquote identity is very, very important, and there are so many of these identities. But one thing I want to point out related to leave me aloneism is that what I find most interesting is that the people who want to be left alone are almost always lumped in with the far right. Uh, the people who want to just do their own thing and be left to their own device, and in turn leave other people alone to do their own thing. They are lumped in by the left uh, with the far right. And this is a really salient point, I think. Because in the end, how you identify, what you identify yourself as, what you consider yourself to be, in an abstract sense at least, is immaterial to the way people will perceive you and what they will call you, and given sufficient power, authority, uh, and numbers, how other people will designate you and, and consequently punish you. Now, this should be pretty obvious uh, in terms of politics. I've already mentioned this. Any view that these days that does not represent the standard left-wing approach to things, uh, the the view of YouTube, the view of Google the view of people who are caterwauling about various things uh, such as race or gender that is even if you're a centrist even if you're left of center that is your your right wing basically you're lumped in there but let's say you're you're basically a centrist with uh, with some tendencies to the right well then you're far right you're alt right so the point I'm trying to make here is that people aren't really, even though the devil's in the details 90% of the time, people aren't very interested in looking at the devil being in the details. They're interested in creating broad sweeping categories that they can lump people into. And in the, we could say, political proxy wars that are waged and fought on the internet, that is absolutely the case. I would never, everyone who listens to me to any skin period of time gets the feeling that I'm some kind of centrist. And I would reluctantly say that that's probably true. I would never say I'm right and I would never say I'm left. I'm just kind of on my own wavelength. Although whatever person might want to pigeon me all as, they're going to do that, right? 
But with that said, uh, everyone I encounter who is who is not already on the right or far right or whatever uh, that is left, mainstream left, they would characterize me as far right or alt right. I hear this all the time. I have no idea why people call me alt right. Um, but anyway, this is what they've done. You can see this. Everyone who has a certain view of the world that is somewhat deviant, even if it's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a deviation from what uh, the mainstream left-wing thinkers think, then they are alt-right there. I mean, look at Ben Shapiro, a extremely Zionistic Jew who thinks Israel is more important than the United States. He's called alt-right. He's called a Nazi. Now, of course, this is all very simplistic, and we know these people aren't really uh, going to the details. But there's also historical precedents for groups of people who may have may not for groups of people who may or may not have identified as X being classified as such. In the mid-20th century, uh, there were many people accused of being communist. Uh, I mean, McCarthy, uh, McCarthyism, basically. Some of these people actually might have been communists, and it's a whole other discussion whether or not they deserve to be persecuted or at least should have been uh, admonished or whatever. I'm not interested in that discussion. But needless to say, there were people who had no communist affiliations who through other means uh, might have been uh, connected to it or even not even connected maybe they came from a certain ethnic background or they were just perceived as such it didn't matter because you had an authoritative majority anti-communist majority looking for communists and they found some if you look at National Socialism, the various groups that they didn't particularly like or, or favor or savor, um, there, are, are, there are degrees of, arb of the arbitrary there. For example, the Nuremberg Laws, if you ever looked at them, are not, they're not really scientific. They are, I mean, everything's are arbitrary at the end of the day, but they, they, go, they go by their own system that they've created. So whether or not the individual in question uh, was or was not part of Jewry, if they, that person did not coincide with the Nuremberg Laws, that person would have been appropriately punished. That's one example. Uh, and, you know, we can theorize that, for example, when uh, the, the Turks uh, did not very much like the Armenians in quote-unquote Turkish territory, that it didn't matter if the Armenians in question actually were Armenian or not, all that mattered was that the Turks associated them with, uh, with being such and that they were given that designation. Now, this obviously can be quite dangerous uh, in, in the long term. Uh, there are plenty, I mean, there are just spades of historical examples where this sort of, it doesn't matter how or what you think you are, it matters more what other people think you are. Relevant and becomes uh, a matter of uh, actual real life danger. On the internet, it's less so, but um, it's not impossible that we could uh, drift towards that sort of thing. It's not impossible that uh, people become so demonized merely because of their beliefs these days. And I think, I think largely we're over the whole racism thing. Well, not entirely, whatever, but not. I mean, we. People need a boogeyman. They need a bugbear, right? The bugbear these days uh, in to, to reinvoke uh, racism. I think these days the the people who are most frowned upon are people whose political or social ideas are not uh, validated and supported by left wing uh, mainstream uh, thinking and ideas. And those people which would include myself, are uh, in theory in the greatest danger long term. Uh, however, that danger might manifest itself. No, I don't think that people who deviate from mainstream left wing thinking are to be sent off to the gulags. But maybe I'm wrong. It's possible. Um, but we know that mainstream companies have taken mighty steps indeed to counteract, to oppose, etc. And I'm not even on the right, although to them it really wouldn't matter very much. Now, getting back to the idea of leave me alone -ism. So many people I know 
even if they wouldn't say that is what I am, that's basically what they are. These people just want to be left alone, do their own thing, and just have a, an unhindered discussion uh, about things without people chiming in uh, and, and piping about any number of things, you know, being politically correct, without redirecting the conversation uh, to an extreme ideology, right or left. And I actually think that this faction of leave me alone people is growing. Most people I know, whatever their tendencies, the main thing they want to, to achieve is in this political atmosphere to be left alone. I'd argue even for myself, one of my life goals is to just be left alone. I don't want people to harass me and I don't want to harass other people. You want to do whatever you want to do, that's great. Leave me out of it, and I will leave you out of my own affairs. And that is a kind of uh, proprietarianism, obviously. Uh, but I think it's very specific to the time and age that we live in. And I find it increasingly strange that there, there's, there's this, this sort of children of the lost, if you will, who we actually don't have terribly much in common in terms of our ideas and even how we think about specific things but since many of us have been shunned or even discussion has been shunned on mainstream uh, media and by the left in general things that we want, might, might want to talk about be it quote unquote sex realism or quote unquote well human biodiversity HPD and other things, uh, it doesn't have to be just that, that discussions uh, of that sort are completely excluded, well, that just all uh, lumps us together. And it's weird, but increasingly, based on my own admittedly anecdotal experience, the people who have been lumped in with the right, the leave me alone people, leave me aloneism people, we tend to be the most tolerant of differing views. And I think this stems from the fact that we just want to be left alone. If somebody has a strongly different standpoint on a particular subject, if I have any knowledge of the subject, uh, I might express a view towards that, or I might not. Um, but I'm not going to get terribly upset if the person doesn't agree with me or we can't see eye to eye. There are times I can get very frustrated if I think something's just factually obvious, very evident, but even in those cases, you know, at some point in time you move on. And so mainstream society is, in my view, afflicted by what I could only call uh, the crusader zeal. Uh, and the irony here, or maybe the paradox is, if all you want to be is left alone, it's very difficult to muster that same zeal because you are not campaigning on a platform to change the world or to offer your own uh, variety of, of zealous fire. You just want to be left in peace. And if I had any mainstream concern or general concern concerning public uh, affairs or YouTube or society in large it would be that we've reached the point where we can no longer just be left alone to do what we want to do and to think what we want to think and to express our views I don't think we can really change the world and when we do it usually ends in disaster but check out the uh, early to mid 20th century for that one but one open question I have to myself and to the audience is what one can do if that is your default position. Because I and other people I have spoken to, when we're asked, you know, what are you, what do you identify as, or the, the best answer I can give is I just want to be left alone. But what do you do with that? That's not a particularly zealous position, I think. I don't care what other people do, and these people, the people that would associate themselves with this idea don't either, they just want to do their own thing. 
it's very, very difficult. And then, on top of that, you have this issue that I mentioned earlier of outgroups designating what in-groups actually are, even if you don't constitute that quote-unquote in-group. I'm not right-wing. I'm not alt-right. I'm not far-right. And I think if you listen even to my videos, if, if you've not had the opportunity to have a, a personal conversation with me, uh, you wouldn't get that sense either. It's why, by the way, my leave me alone, why I do not like giving advice. One, I think I'm far too incompetent to give advice, far too unwise, far too unintelligent, far too all of these things. Uh, I can listen, but I just want to be left alone. It is not my place to rule over others or to dole out uh, advice telling others what to do or suggest that they do something. I just don't know what the answer is going forward on this particular question is if you want to be left alone and don't want to affiliate with specific groups uh, beyond whatever uh, coinciding there might be in terms of certain ideas, which would only then be uh, for the purpose of specific discussions, you know, what do you do? It's, it, it's not the, the zealot's cause exactly. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this topic because I think it's important because I know a lot of people just want to be left to their own devices and do not uh, approach everything with uh, the zealot's fire uh, or cudgel. And uh, here we are in uh, early-ish 2018, and we, uh, we're stuck with this dilemma. And long-term, the dilemma of uh, ostracism or, or, well, we're already, many of us are ostracized already, uh, just because of that, um, just for wanting to be left alone and having your own thoughts, without any actual affiliation with some of these things that are sometimes uh, thrown our way. Something to think about, something to dwell on, and maybe, maybe we can come up with a solution, maybe not. Not everything can be solved. Everyone, thanks for tuning in, and I will check you out at a later date. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.